you are Indonesian, for example, and I will always be French. And I respect my own culture, even if I don't know a lot about my own culture, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's paradoxal, but I would like to document this culture because I find it attractive and I think it can inspire the people of my country as well. Siti Rosia. Umurnya berapa? Nggak tahu umur rumah saya. Oh, lupa. Rumahnya mana? Rumahnya? Gak rumah. Gak punya rumah. Gak punya rumah? Iya, ikut sama anak aja. Di tidur di mana? Di sawah? Di rumah <laughs> anak dong. Di rumah. Why Indonesia? Why is it so intriguing? Is it so unique or um what is your perspective before when you uh, have my this? my perspective before was basically i was a student in graphic design back in the days in france and i wanted to uh, forget and change my way of living jadi saya mulai berkeliling dan saya pili asia di dunia ada beberapa negara yang saya mau kunjungi di asia jadi pertama saya kunjungi vietnam Lalu, Cambodia, Filipinas, sebagai volunteer. So, I was just doing volunteer, karena waktu itu, saya bisa bahasa Inggris dengan baik. Mm. So, I decided to travel as a volunteer in order to discover new cultures. Mm. Jadi, saya punya daftar um, sama negara-negara, dan negara yang terakhir adalah negara Indonesia. So, so Indonesia is, is the last on your list? Yeah, it's by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally by mistake that I arrived here because Dulunia, saya cuma punya rencana mau tinggal di Indonesia selama oh, satu it, bulan. What is your first uh, experience? Uh, apa yang mempertemukan kamu pertama kali dengan Indonesia uh, sebelum kamu datang betul-betul uh, datang ada di sini? You mean like your, uh, your experience on on get to know Indonesia uh, before coming here? Before coming here. To be honest, um, I didn't even know where to place Indonesia correctly <laughs> on the map. Karena, you know, like Indonesia is really big mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just had like a basic vision and idea about where was Indonesia. And yeah, I knew that Bali existed, but I wanted to... Again, again, uh, you from across the, the ocean there yeah. uh, think that Indonesia, uh, the first experience that uh, uh, the thing that you recognize about Indonesia is Bali. Exactly. Okay. And uh, actually, because I'm quite different from others, I didn't want to go to Indonesia and stay in Bali. Mm -hmm. So I was accepted in uh, different organizations mm -hmm. and I, I chose the one uh, that was the least famous. I chose Jambi in Sumatra Selatan. Because I was supposed to stay a month and I really wanted to get to know the people, how they were living and what was different from my own country. So uh, for you as an Euro a European, yeah. uh, the question is uh, you are wondering on how uh, yeah. difference between the state of life between the yeah. European and, and Asian. Exactly, especially for the religion, the culture, because the first time I was in Indonesia, I was shocked, not in a bad way, mm -hmm. but shocked to see how how much, uh, how people were still holding uh, on their religious value mm -hmm. and how it was part of their main lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And to me, this was so, so you might ask me, yeah, but I mean, uh, in Vietnam or Cambodia, they, they are so like, uh, you know, like a Buddhist. Yeah, that's true. But in Indonesia, it's like, because your country is stretching over 5,000 kilometers, mm -hmm. you can have this kind of like huge difference um, towards like culture and tradition and religion, mm -hmm. especially when you are traveling from the west to the east. Back then, I didn't know that. So Is I that based on your experience or based on books? On books like what? No, you, like, uh, that knowledge yeah. that you get from, the, from books you read or based on your experience meeting the real people here? Mm -hmm. in Both, but from the books, I didn't, I didn't really learn a lot. Mm -hmm. I learned mostly everything in this country by experiences. It's hard to find a literature about Indonesia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, not, not many foreigners are actually interested uh, in discovering uh, Asia uh, very, in a very deep way. Mm -hmm. Apalagi di Indonesia, because it's a very big country, so we might just have like a basic understanding about Bali and that's it. It's very hard to go deeper after in order to dig this culture. And but I, but um, your search, um, at first, yeah. it doesn't necessarily uh, 
you are you are planning to make a book, right? Not at all. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> where far. where the book coming from? Where uh, the, book? the book came from the fact that Kuteka saya sudah menghabiskan satu bulan di Jambi waktu itu saya mau perpanjang my stay in Indonesia. Mm. Uh, so I started to have a lot of friends. Karena I realized ketika uh, saya berkeliling di Indonesia, di mana pun saya uh, merasa seperti di rumah di Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Karena home, orang, orang, home is where the heart is, right? Or home is where the heart is, <laughs> and uh, especially for the people. And I wanted to be this uh, foreigner um, with a different perspective, and I wanted to um, focus my work on the people because nobody, very few foreigners have done it before. And this book came from the people because um, you might ask me, but where it, come, it came from? And it's because of how friendly and how hospitable the people were and how easy I was able to connect with them. Mm. So this Don't is- Don't you think that sometimes uh, it's easier for foreigners to get into the societies yeah. r- rather than for us locals, sometimes uh, we get, um, you know, like, um, Suspicious people are suspicious mm-hmm. to what what we are really intention yeah. uh, to come to their village and yeah. uh, do you agree with that? Is uh, the foreigners will be uh, easier for you to get right into the societies? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because I will always see your country from my foreigners' perspective and my foreigners' eyes. Mm. So just like in my country, I I I am sometimes careful about my own people, mm. but I know that Indonesia is able to. Your country is very famous to be open and to always welcome foreigners or any kind of like uh, uh, people who want to. Uh, yeah. People uh, say that we are we have the biggest smile. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. But it was unexpected for me to stay this long. I mean, at least to visit it and to have a project that is like uh, focused on the people because mm-hmm. this project is not for me. It's for the people of Indonesia. So basically, I want to pay tribute. Saya coba melalui buku ini. Ini. Cuman buku pertama, yeah. Mm. There will be like a collection of books. So uh, we decided to call it Beyond. Karena Beyond is like everything that is above mm-hmm. what tourists can basically already see. Yeah. And so what do you think uh, from this book? Yeah. Wh- uh, what you find yeah. is uh, what is the Beyond part that we don't already already know as the locals. Uh, the Beyond part is that uh, I I. I push myself and challenge myself to try to find all the remaining tribes of Indonesia, trying to go to the most remote uh, corners of Indonesia. And you will be surprised to see that it's, it's funny because I just like uh, took this page, which is like uh, two portrait of uh, Suku Badui. And this is funny because I was amazed to see how many Indonesians didn't know very well their culture, especially that they never heard of the, the Badui tribes, some mm-hmm. of them. Maybe in Java they still heard about that, but mm-hmm. not everyone. And I was able to go like above. they recognize, but they don't really know. Exactly, mm-hmm. they don't know about like uh, how those people live. Mereka hidup tanpa sandal, you know, like they mereka jalan-jalan pakai jalan kaki aja, tapi tanpa sandal. Tapi kamu sulit nggak masuk? Have you have any difficulties of uh, getting into their society in Badui especially? Uh, in Badui especially, no, because uh, I'm easy for making friends. Jadi waktu itu saya punya teman asli Katanya orang Badui Perancis juga. kan romantis ya. Uh, sorry? Katanya orang Perancis romantis. <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you using that that that? that enggak, that, enggak. That. Tidak, tidak, tidak. No, 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 not at all. But I, I have the uh, because before becoming a photographer, uh, saya dulunya seorang guru bahasa Inggris bahasa Perancis ketika saya kerja di Jakarta. Mm. So I developed my communication skills, and today I was able to to take those communication skills and to put them at the service of photography. Mm. So I combine a lot of things. And to me, meeting the people and trying to get to know their lifestyle is something amazing for me. But because you, have, uh, you have to have some sort of uh, knowledge about photographies, right? Of course. Where, where did you get it? You, you learn by yourself? Or? Uh, I autodidact, autodidact everything by myself because I think the best artists are those who are like self-made. Okay. So I try to... It's very hard for me to travel and of course to put stories because um, usually I'm always alone. I always travel by myself, by motorbike. Yes, solo traveler. I'm a solo traveler. So to make this book, I traveled more than 10,000 kilometers in Jawa. Dari Jakarta. For, how, for how long? 
Slama de Lapan Boulan for like eight months to make this book. Uda Mengambil and Pat Puluribu Libi photo. And then How many in this book? 150. photo. Jadi kamu, you curated about from out of 4,000, 40,000 frames uh-huh. into 150. Exactly, frames. 150 frames only. And those frames are very specific about um, the culture and the suku-suku bangsa Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Karena dengan proyek ini, saya mau melestarikan warisan dan nilai Indonesia. I want to, also the people of Indonesia, I want them to be to be proud from where they come from because today I can see a huge uh, shifting gap. But my question is why? I mean, yeah. why such a foreigners mm-hmm. have a deep um, question or deep uh, understanding or acceptance to any uh, your outside cultures? Yeah. And I'm, because I'm trying to find I'm, why. I'm just, I'm just happy to see how people can still live. I wish they could stay like this forever because mm. You are Indonesian, for example, and I will always be French. And I respect my own culture, even if I don't know a lot about my own culture, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's paradoxical, but I would like to document this culture because I find it attractive and I think it can inspire the people of my country as well. Mm-hmm. If I have this project, it's because we have no more culture in my project. Mm-hmm. And when I see Indonesia, which is like, rich of culture like that, I can't help but keep questioning about where I come from and how I could actually document this country mm-hmm. in the most beautiful way the, the, so that me, people can be more grateful about what they have. Because 20, 25 years from now, even your country, I mean, like those people working in the rice field, they, I mean, you know, sekarang, banyak orang yang cari pekerjaan di kota cukup gede di Jawa, di Jakarta. So, the people don't want to do any more farming work. Those jobs are going to... Hard labor. Exactly. And to me, it sounds maybe humble and simple from a perspective, but just the fact to freeze those moments and to be able to keep a legacy, a, a, a trace, mm-hmm. is already enough. For me, I already accomplished my work as a fine art uh, documentary photographer. Okay, so, so you, it's mostly a book that is aimed for, of course, foreigners to help them like uh, discovering Indonesia mm-hmm. from another perspective through my eyes. So what, what do you get from uh, feedback from, uh, how do you get the feedback from the foreigners? And I want uh, to know also, what is the feedback from locals about this book? Uh, from foreigners, I will be talking mostly about French mm-hmm. because orang-orang Prancis biasanya uh, ketika mereka berkeliling Indonesia, mereka suka pergi ke tempat-tempat yang kurang terkenal. Jadi, not a they like, mainstream destination. Exactly. So they like to meet. They they're actually curious, just like me, and they like to know what kind of. Um, Uh, what people live in, what kind of places, how they eat, mm. and they are attracted with wrinkles. It's mm. part of wisdom, life, a strength, and it can also give them a lot of inspiration because uh, it makes them feel more grateful about who they are back in their country. Like, oh, wow, I met this grandma who was like uh, working in a rice field or such, uh, such things. From Indonesia, uh, from my Indonesian friends, they were surprised because Like I told you, they don't know much about their own culture sometimes. Like if you go to, for example, like uh, Bandung in West Java, mm. you, you have a lot of different interesting places in Bandung. But I have a lot of friends, for example, who live there. And I've been to like uh, traditional villages where they never went. And for me, my... Kurang, ma- kurang jauh mainnya. Kan? Exactly, because <laughs> the, the people of Indonesia, they basically just travel in their own village. Apalagi kalau orang-orang tua. They don't like to go out, mm. so they don't know actually their own country. And your country is scattered into so many different islands. Mm-hmm. So if you make a Sundanese lady meet with like a Japanese lady like this one, they will like, uh, maybe they will still be able to discover uh, each other because of uh, different kind of habits yeah. they have been developing over their life. Yeah. So this project is a part of um, interesting Indonesia, a new window to foreigners but also giving some kind of like new perspective, cultural knowledge, even for Indonesians, trying to make them uh, learn more about like their own people, mm-hmm. where they come from, and to have a sense of pride. I'm Indonesian and this is my country. This is, yeah. this is my culture. And If you is... foreigners can be so proud of this culture, why don't we <laughs> proud of our own cultures, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So this is a bit my 
This is a bit my humble purpose by doing this book. And this is actually a book collection. Jadi, ito beyond Java, yeah. uh, but I will be working. So it's, 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 uh, it's going to be a series. Exactly, it will be a book series of mm -hmm. eight books. So I want to be the first foreigner to travel everywhere in Indonesia, mm -hmm. trying to find the culture, at least what's left, mm -hmm. and trying to craft stories. Jadi, di dalam buku niya, ada juga empat cerita yang cukup menarik buat orang-orang asing, tapi juga buat orang-orang Indonesia. Saya udah ketemu sama, uh, apa namanya? Uh, Dukun Badanak, okay. yang tinggal okay. di Cirebon juga. Mm -hmm. So I try to meet those kind of like old ladies who practices some of the latest jobs that are no longer practiced by the younger generations. Mm -hmm. Jadi ada cerita, uh, ada satu cerita tentang dia. Dia juga 100 tahun. I can find the... Oh, usianya 100 tahun pada saat kamu potret. Yeah, usianya 100 tahun. Jadi ini dia. Uh, so yeah. In the book, we have like uh, short stories that are meant to be uh, inspiring. Uh, inspiring and uh, interesting. They are supposed to uplift our mind mm -hmm. toward how we live. At least, dari apa, orang -orang mm -hmm. they should wonder like how they live and what, I mean, like, what their country have become. And this photo also is from uh, uh, the Dukun Berana. The hand that uh, already helped so many births uh, exactly. in the area. <laughs> she's seen as like, um, today she's still helping some expecting mothers, just as giving advices. Tapi ni cukup, because she's like the eldest of her village, so she has like a special figure about uh, uh, about other people. I mean, mm. like she has a she has a special uh, position in the village because of what she's been doing her whole life. Ada juga cerita tentang suku Badui. So I told you I've been trying to um, uh, take a glimpse about how people in the kampung could live so long like that. Yeah. I met one of the eldest Badui women. The way of life, exactly. what they eat. And yeah, Salatus Town Lebi, like the way they... So I umur panjang. To, <laughs> umur panjang, yeah. So I tried to question myself about how people can live so long mm -hmm. in your country. So what is your conclusion about Umur Panjang in Indonesia? My conclusion is that uh, the more you live in a simple way, without any processed food, and the more you might actually live not only healthier, but also happier. happier. And this is exactly what I found in the Kampung, karena uh, waktu itu ketika saya keliling-keliling di Pulau Jawa, saya uh, uh, selalu tinggal sama mereka di desa-desa yang cukup kecil, you know? Yeah. Jadi saya bisa menginap sama mereka, saya bisa makan. Enggak sulit? Enggak sulit. Diizinkan? Dulunya sul susah sekali. Gimana kamu minta izinnya? Huh? Gimana, bagaimana, how you ask your uh, permission for you to stay at their house? Saya tidak pernah tanya permission, because uh, orang-orang Indonesia... Uh, Mengundang? Yeah, in, kepo in. sekali. <laughs> so, they're kepo. Like, kepo. Exactly, they're like kepo dan penasaran, kenapa ada boleh di sini yang mau mungkin like kunjungi desa kami, yeah. tapi gak ada apapun. Dari pola pikir mereka, tidak ada apapun. Mereka punya apa-apa. Iya, yeah. tapi untuk uh, saya, it's like, oh wow, they're like, it's, it's full of life. The elderly, the way they live, and the way they are able to eat as well. Like, so, simple food, like basically just like rice, gorengan, of course, goreng-gorengan. Bala-bala. Mm. And... Uh, <laughs> fresh chicken or even ikan karena di di Sabadu juga mm -hmm. ada there is a river so they they like to eat a lot mm -hmm. of like mm -hmm. ikan as well i spent four days with my friend and we already got like those kind of like uh, uh, salty uh, small ikan like the yeah, ikan fish. asin ikan asin mm -hmm. yeah so i was like i think people must be living maybe quite long because they keep eating maybe always the same food yeah. maybe eating always the same food without any processed food can help you live longer mm -hmm. so Studies should back up this for sure, but um, and their activity. Uh, okay. One more thing that you can share to the audience is yeah. the advent, uh, the disadvantages of doing this project. I mean, uh, pasti ada satu uh, apa ya cobaan ataupun yeah. halangan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the, is the toughest uh, disadvantage of you uh, for completing this project? Yeah. The toughest uh, thing. Um, it's a good question. Let me think about it. <laughs> uh, it's I think you, you the, the toughest thing somewhere is somewhere along the way you meet a lot of uh, mishaps. Uh, yeah, 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 a lot of like uh, things that uh, mishappen as well. Um, for me, the most challenging was uh, doing everything by myself, especially for this project mm. because I rode my motorbike 
my own motorbike uh, terkadang perjalanannya uh, susah dia dan mengendarai bahaya juga jangan kebayang oh, ini ya <laughs> apa motor trail atau apa enggak dia naik bebek naik <laughs> motor matic yeah, bebek yeah, yeah. kemana mana nyusurin kampung <laughs> so the, the the most challenging part was communication uh, because sometimes uh, I had to ask my direction about where to go uh, it was the toughest part um, what made me the, the saddest is that of course Indonesia has already changed a lot from what it was. So I was, it was very hard to take the pictures that I actually wanted because I, even if when I want to like uh, very remote, I had a hard time to actually find the, the, the baju baju adat, mm. the way people were still living. And to me, it kind of like break my heart to see that there is nothing, I have nothing against Indonesia becoming even more developed. I'm just saying that I'm happy if Indonesia can keep Uh, its uh, own identity, mm-hmm. and this is basically what I'm trying to do with the, with this project. And sometimes I wasn't able to find this in some areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so modernization uh, is eating our past uh, so fast. Exactly. Um, but if you delete your past, what do you become? Do you mm-hmm. still have an identity, or are you st- just going to become like me? Okay. Because what kind of uh, things separate us? from a modern Indonesian with a modern French uh, guy like me as yeah. well. So I, I try to just like uh, preserve this as long as I can and trying to uh, still figure out how Indonesians can live mm-hmm. in a traditional way to present it to the French market and the foreigners in general. To strengthen the, the, the way of life of uh, foreigners and also the locals uh, on how important it is to yep. uphold the principles of yes. um, way back from the, our ancestors. Yes, because for me, less is more. It doesn't mean that we are surrounded by technology and comfort yeah, that yeah, we can yeah. live longer and better. And live enough. <laughs> just enough. And to me, this book, uh, show, I mean, uh, this journey showed me that I was grateful for the things I had because ketika kamu berkeliling Pulau Jawa selama 8 bulan, spread saya and then you go back to your uh, place in Jakarta you cannot help but feel grateful about what you have mm-hmm. karena di itu manusia di dalam kamar saya di Jakarta ketika saya masih tinggal di sini uh, saya punya semuanya i have like hot water i have a comfy bed and when i spend eight months with those people sleeping sometimes in uh, like um, you know like bamboo bamboo houses and different places away from this comfort uh mandi sama air dingin sekali apalagi kalau pagi-pagi and you go back to uh, uh, having this kind of comfort back to your uh, place in Jakarta you you can only feel grateful mm-hmm. and you can compare yourself about like uh, i mean like uh, mm-hmm. how you've been living so far and Uh, yeah, it, it's good, right? It, it's it is something good. This is the magic of traveling, mm-hmm. but I don't consider myself as like a like a mere tourist or traveler, but more like adventurer. Like I try to go off my comfort zone. Yeah, Karena life happens outside of your comfort zone for me. Yeah. So perjalanan different. mengubah kita. Yeah, exactly. So this is the main purpose of Beyond Java. Nanti a Canada, Bali, Tenggara, so Sumatra, Maluku, Sulawesi, sampai Papua. So. Wow trying to meet the tribes and of course craft interesting stories that can be inspiring for the people of France and nice. uh, foreigners. Very nice. That's it. This is Okay. Uh, uh, we have to close. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Marius, uh, this is the uh, end part of our uh, programs and uh, one thing I want to ask, uh, to ask you is yeah. uh, Kamu ingin menetapkan apa, menitipkan pesan apa kepada uh, pejalan, mm-hmm. baik orang luar maupun orang lokal, mm-hmm. kepada audiens kita. On uh, based on your experience, what is the message you want to get across everybody today? That Indonesia is very wonderful, uh, such a beautiful country for me as a foreigner to stay here for seven years. So thank you for having me. I mean, especially here at Geo, but also for Indonesia because it made me evolve to the man that I am today. And I want people to see your country as always. I want people to always remember your country as a colorful nation, hospitable, and a nation that was strong by uh, its diverse cultures and people. 
uh, for Orang Indonesia, if I have a message, be proud of your culture as well. Be proud and um, hold on this pride as much as you can uh, through... Uh, as long as we can. As long as we can through uh, this uh, cultural legacy because this is aimed to be like a cultural legacy. Yeah. Not for me, but for actually uh, Indonesians. Yep. So yeah, it's a, that's my message. So one, one point is the, it, it is uh, about cultural legacy. Exactly. Ini adalah sebuah uh, warisan budaya, warisan dunia dan saya merasa, merasa uh, bahagia sekali Na National Geographic Indonesia melihat ini bahwa Marius berbicara bukan hanya mewakili orang Perancis. Marius dan kita berbicara sebagai warga dunia. <laughs> kita adalah warga yeah, planet besar ini, uh, planet yang semakin tua, semakin tergerus oleh perubahan zaman. Yang kita perlukan adalah hari ini tentang bagaimana kita sebagai manusia dan penduduk dunia bisa bertahan sekuat-kuatnya selama-lamanya untuk bisa mempunyai, mempertahankan warisan-warisan ini. Buku Marius adalah sebuah catatan perjalanan. Sebuah catatan perjalanan yang saya percaya juga ikut mengubah Marius menjadi manusia hari ini. Marius yang orang Indonesia, part of Indonesia, bagian dari Indonesia. Saya pikir proyek-proyek seperti ini adalah sebuah upaya dari kita sebagai warga dunia untuk bisa belajar mengetahui planet kita seperti apa, belajar mengetahui diri kita lebih baik, sehingga suatu hari nanti planet ini akan tetap ada, dan kita tidak hanya bisa mempelajari kekayaan itu hanya dari buku-buku seperti yang dibuat oleh Marius. Ya. Mudah-mudahan perjalanan masih akan terus mengikuti manusia sampai akhir hayat, dan planet ini terus bisa menghidupi kita selama kita masih bisa menjaganya. Baik, sahabat National Geographic Indonesia, Sampai ketemu di National Geographic Corner Indonesia berikutnya. Salam dari saya Didi Kasim. Salam dari Marius Bragis. Thank you for having me. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Yeah. Thank you.